Hey folks, I'm back with another round of pack T test. You know, I'm almost done with my pack T tests for the season at least, maybe for quite a long time. But today I'm doing nine millimeter and I'm using a new, new for me there, that's for sure, Sig Sauer P320. Uh, I've been shooting this a little bit. My son's been shooting it a lot more than I. Nice gun, nice gun, very nice gun in fact. Uh, if you've been watching some of our other pack t tests uh any other things i've been doing with the handguns you'll notice or you might recall that i was talking about how accurate the beretta 92 fs has been for me well this on my previous just kind of anecdotal tests almost this beat uh, pretty easily it beat the the beretta so I'm very excited to include this in my pack t test today. And what I'm going to be using is Nosler uh, Plus P bonded. This is defense ammo from Nosler. And it is our 124 grain jacketed hollow point. That's it right there. Going to shoot five rounds at our bullseye target. Then I'm going to slide over and put one round into the clear ballistic gelatin. This is 20% gelatin, uh, considered a NATO block, and we'll see how it does there. Then to have a little bit more fun, you know, I found this, it's a reload of mine. This is a 115 grain Sierra Sportsmaster. Kind of an older bullet, and I'm curious how this is going to perform also. 115 grain, same drill, Five rounds at the bullseye, one round at the clear ballistic, ballistic gelatin. Precision and accuracy measured on the bullseye target. Consistency is going to come from the lab radar. We're going to look at standard deviationals, muzzle velocities, and of course the T component, terminal performance in the ballistic gel. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Here we go. Looks like some pretty consistent ammo. This is factory ammo. We're clear. Nice performance out of the Sig Sauer 320. Get that last one. Well, we just knocked out a pair of 9mm bullets using that new 6 hour P320. Glad I did this. Hey, let's take a look at the results. I'm going to start with the 124 grain Nosler, and uh, it did you know, quite nice on paper, certainly did very nice on paper. We had a 1.7 inch extreme spread, nice group, everything in the red and uh, 48 points with two in the X. 
the uh, standard deviation of those muzzle velocities was single digits, 9.9 .9 feet per second. Very good stuff out of some factory uh, ammo. Our muzzle velocity, by the way, was 1,157 feet per second. Now let's take a look at the Sierra. 115 grain, kind of the traditional weight for the 9 millimeter Luger, which, by the way, is very interesting to me. It's, it's like the name is changing now. It has always been 9 by 19, 9 millimeter Luger. Some folks call it the 9 millimeter Parabellum, but apparently, over the last X number of years, I guess, it's becoming much more common that it's being called the 9 millimeter NATO. Um, kind of a little aside there, but I, I just noticed that as I'm looking at much more 9 millimeter stuff recently. Well, anyway, I didn't group too well. Uh, I don't think it was so much the Sig Sauer. Maybe it was. Maybe if I shot this with the Beretta or one of the other guns, it would have performed better this way, but um, we can always guess and speculate. But this is what we got. 5.1 inch group. Two of them outside of the red. Uh, not too good. Really strung those rounds horizontally. And um, none, of course, in the 10 ring or in the X right in the bullseye. Get, we ended up with a score of 41 points. Again, zero uh, in the X. 1,222 feet per second, which is very standard for my reloads. I'm always sitting right around there. And 15.4 uh, feet per second standard deviation. I didn't quite make my single digits on my own reloads. I have done better in the past, but this time didn't quite stack up. Now what's interesting, though, you know, the 115 Sierra Sportsmasters didn't really do too well on paper. Um, but then things kind of flipped as we went to the ballistic gelatin. Now, in that ballistic gelatin, the first shot that I fired was in pretty darn new clear ballistic gelatin. Remember, this is the NATO block, 20% ordnance, uh, or it's supposed to emulate that at least. And um, the shot, I had to be very careful on my shot. I'm firing these always at 7 yards for the terminal ballistics test. 15 yards for the uh, the bullseye test, but I had to be very very careful on my placement because I had some other rounds in there in different directions uh, And I designated a spot in that uh, Block gel block and I had to put the round right there uh, And this 320 was shooting very very good very very well um, And I fired that one round and it went really it went exactly where I needed it to go That was great and I didn't have anything else that could have modified those results because it hit another wound channel, those sort of things. No, it, it went into uh, the gel on its own in fresh gel. And what, what did we get? Well, 12.8, almost 13 inches of penetration, actually 12 and 7 eighths inch of penetration. It expanded nicely, 153% uh, expansion, and it essentially retained all of its weight. Well, 99.9% .9 of the weight was retained in that extracted, uh, retrieved bullet. Ended up with a total score of 392.5 points for the Nosler 124 grain bullet. Looking then at the 115 grain uh, Sierra Sportsmaster, uh, it penetrated a little bit less, 11.5 inches. This is a different gel block. Um, well. It's still a 20% NATO gel block. I retain all the records on these things, uh, the remelting and so on. This one's been remelted a number of times from last season, the first time it was used this season. Um, and so we are going to assume very, very consistent uh, comparisons between that block and any of the other blocks on the music. And that's a pretty fair uh, assumption, although there are um, definitely going to be some differences between one block and another, and probably some differences after a person remelts. So, again, 11.5 uh, inches of penetration, 173% expansion. This thing really expanded, and uh, retained weight in 98%. Uh, so it did well again. Ended up, though, with a total score of 415 points. 
This, then, this result puts the uh, Sierra 124 grain Sportsmaster the, at the top of the list for a 9 millimeter bullet. It actually outperformed in this terminal test, uh, it actually outperformed the 124 grain bullets. Now, would I choose this bullet in particular over some of the others that we tested? I don't really think so. Now, here's why. Uh, I look at the full picture. I look at the, how well this bullet uh, shoots, uh, the accuracy of it, the precision. That's all important. If I can't hit my target, the performance of the bullet is kind of a moot point. Similarly, if I have a very um, precise and very accurate round, but the bullet performs terribly, then um, I don't want to choose that bullet either. So it's kind of a compromise, maybe. I'm looking for a win-win situation where I have very good um, pack performance, accuracy and precision. But consistency plays the role of telling me that um, as I keep using this load, because it's so consistent, I can expect very, very similar accuracy and precision muzzle velocities in the future. So once again, I'm looking for kind of a well-rounded full package in a defensive bullet for the 9mm. So those 124 grain bullets that we experimented with quite a lot last year were very impressive. The transient cavitation channel uh, that we get with that high, um, high speed camera or that uh, slow-mo camera uh, really kind of showed normally a large amount of energy being put into that target. Now the transient cavitation channel um, snapshot that I got from the 115 Sierra was very impressive this time. It's probably um, the most impressive 115 grain bullet that I've seen thus far and we've looked at quite a few of them. You know as far as the 124 grain bullet is concerned the Nosler did fine but as you've heard me say before there are other bu bullets that are better and we've tested some of those bullets. Kind of the name and uh, style of bullet that keeps cropping up is the Sig Sauer V-Crown and the Spear Gold Dots. Well, I'll be back with another Pack t video using handgun bullets. We're going to jump back to the 45 ACP. I'll be testing the 220 grain Hornady Flex Lock Critical Duty. And then I've got a couple of rifle bullets I really want to pop into that ballistic gelatin. I'm going to be using a couple blocks to make sure I stop it. Hey, thanks a bunch for watching. Stay tuned for our upcoming videos, a little bit more pack T testing, a lot of other cool stuff I think coming up.